which you may have seen Joel Com do. Catherine, good to see you. Um, but we're when live. I, we're live. I threw it on you. We're here. <laughs> I'm talking to my friends over here. We're live. Okay, yeah. so we're like ahead. super meta right now. <laughs> We're super meta. So I'm going to share the link with, now. Uh, we have Molly a link. And uh, we're live all over the place. We're here on my profile. We're live in our group. And um, I'm excited to talk bots and messenger marketing and all things brand and influencers because I, I'll share this with you, Molly. There's a, a few people who I, who pop up on my feed and I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of Facebook lives. And so whenever someone I see is like trying to like, like, do as many Facebook lives as me. I'm like the first, the first thought is like, who the hell does this person think they are? And then the second thing was like, oh wait, they actually know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So um, that I will have to say, I definitely was like, I don't, I didn't think there was anyone who did more Facebook lives than me, but I am happy to pass that baton to you. <laughs> and, and now I'm in the place where I'm like repurposing more Facebook lives and I'm actually doing the lives. You are hardcore. It's it's the only <laughs> thing that it's the only thing that keeps the only thing I've got, frankly, is all I can hold on to. But uh, I'm excited because Molly has built um, a rabid a rabid fan base. She's got a, a great following where she teaches and um, shares how to how to do this stuff. But then she also has uh, her own clients where she's building out some of this stuff as well. So I'm just excited to talk with uh, with Molly about some of this stuff and hear what she's uh, what she's got going on. So if you guys are catching this live. And you guys are into chatbots, messenger marketing, social media, whatever it is. Get your thumbs, hit the like button. Let's uh, let's get some people uh, on here and ask any questions that you guys have any because I have some some selfish questions that I'm going to get into. But um, Molly, we call this the the messenger marketing mastery summit. And um, what what's interesting is we've had three. You're now our fourth guest that's been on here. We've had two developers, and you are now our second marketer. And what's interesting is that chatbots and messenger marketing are kind of this unique place where really, really nerdy people, developers who are like even nerdier than me are clashing with these marketers or like <laughs> or, or cooperating or I don't know. They're just kind yeah, of it's like this amazing, magical thing that's happening. Totally. So how did you get here? T catch us up on how you got into the space and kind of fill us in on the blanks on, on where you started and, and why you chose like chatbots as a place to kind of talk about, which otherwise the outside world seems kind of lame, but I think people want to know it's really awesome. But it's like the most magical thing <laughs> ever. So I started off as actually as a musical theater performer and um, worked professionally for almost 20 years in New York, did national tours. My husband and I have a jazz band. And I had this brilliant idea to launch a course called Prepared Performer Profits, because my business is called The Prepared Performer. And I was going to cure the starving artist syndrome and help performers to be able to um, run a business using their, their ta creative talents. I had built up a really successful vocal coaching business here in Southern California. And I was like, other people need this. And we launched it and it failed like <laughs> miserably, <laughs> which who would have thunk that saying you're curing the starving artist syndrome and pay me money for that would not work. <laughs> it's, I see it over and over again in the, in the internet space though, is that people, they, they chase their passion and they go, this is what I want to do. I want to help people like this. And then they forget all of the A, B, C, D, E, and they go straight to the Z. And then they're like, why isn't no one buying it? And then I've even seen people, help help people like bitter at their, at their audience of like, you're not buying my stuff. Like what's going on? So so what happened? Why did you? Yeah. So really at that point, it was like two things. One was because we had done a pilot of this and the pilot did pretty well, actually. So I was like, this is going to work. We had 15 people do the pilot. Let's like raise the price and go full force. But no. So um, the we two things. One was like, who are you speaking to? And just because your ideal client is someone that you want to serve does not mean that that's someone who will pay you. And and the way that you identify with them, because now we have loads of artists in our programs, but I'm not calling them a starving artist. Mm. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like, you're like, hey, what the hell, dick? You're exactly. like, <laughs> like, I know I'm starving. You don't have to point it out to me every time you go live. Ooh, um, right. And I didn't want to identify with the people who who were identifying with that starving artist syndrome because then they're, they're already in there. So we switched that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. And then the other thing was, and this is before bots were around, but it's really about being um, like creating those real connections. And, and when I did that, my pilot, I reached out individually to a lot of people. And then when I went full force, I tried to do this like massive scale without actually building relationships, mm. which was not very effective. So in this panic attack state, I switched everything. And instead of helping 
performers to have a business, I started coaching business owners to use Facebook Live because magically Facebook Live had come out around that time and I was seeing some super cool results with it. So we launched a course called Camera Confidence where I teach um, not only speaking and performance skills, bringing your own self to the camera, but also I really, you know, even though I was this performer, I've always had this very like nerdy techie side of me. And um, there were a lot of like ninja things we were doing with Facebook Live that most people didn't even know existed at the time. And so we had this full course. Um, I can go more into that if you want me to, but really we launched course and the rest is history. And then we met yeah. <laughs> And so, and so it, it kind of progressed eventually it's, it's courses and courses to where now you're showing people how to implement um, specifically with bots is that is yeah that so we were at social media marketing world last year so just a little over a year ago and I had turned on a bot on my page but I didn't really know what I was doing with it and I'll like I've told Kelly this like the moment was so clear we were sitting in Mari Smith's training it was the day after social media marketing world she had a private training and um Kelly Mirabella leaned over and was like did you know you could do bots with Facebook live I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. She was like, if you can schedule it and you, you know, you can connect this growth tool. And I was like, what? And like, I, you know, people say as soon as you, if, if you can develop like preeminence and be, as soon as there's an opportunity to do something, go like hard and fast. And that is what we did. So um, it was awesome. And now we have a full agency. We have a whole course that we launched and we've been featured all over the place as like, the most fun bot to play with. <laughs> and really like people will get scared or think that it's like this technical thing. But for us, it's about how can we take your energy and your message mm -hmm. and create this character inside your bot that's going to communicate with your audience in a way that's fun and engaging and then is super strategic so that it actually leads to sales. Right. A lot of people think that bots are, and I, I tell my students, our, for us, we focus a lot on how do, we, how do you pitch and how do you sell bots? And, yeah, and which I things, love, and I'd love to talk about that with you today too. So. <laughs> and one of the things is like the rule number one is like don't talk about bots. Like don't use the word bots because no. <laughs> it scares the shit out of people. Yeah. Um, because they don't it it has a negative kind of you know it's just negative connotation. So specifically for you, can you think of many and excuse, excuse me any stories or examples where you were able to kind of bring a company, a brand, uh, a person's personality into the bot, and how that kind of change the user experience or how that played out for the for the business is there something that comes to mind for either yeah. like or a client yeah so i mean with us with like with, with my page it's like i'm not just talking about business right away when you first opt into our welcome message you get like you can get tips about facebook live you can get tips about and we always establish that it's a character it's not the person from the page actually speaking right it's because we don't want to and what we're doing, we don't want to trick people to think they're talking to a human. We want them to know this is a bot. This is a human. Um, but I don't just give them Facebook Live messenger bot tips I, or, you know, way, pathways to go through. We also allow them to listen to my jazz band. So it's like they can all of us. It, the third thing says, like, sing to me and they can go there. And it's like a live video oh. thing with my jazz band, which seems like it might have nothing to do. But it actually is something that gives us something to connect about and lets them see that there's like, more behind the scenes? I was so, you know, one thing that really, I, when I look at influence, I don't follow very many people, but one thing that I do is I, I look at how are people responding to that person? And what I loved is when I hopped on a live video of yours, there was just so much engagement, so much, so much, so many people who felt like they had that relationship with you. And I'd imagine that you employ your chatbot to kind of scale that, that connection or to allow that opportunity to relate with uh, with the person in a way that you know, frankly is impossible otherwise and it's about like it's about creating like polarizing conversations right so we have um one client that we went really deep into who exactly are they serving and by sharing like vulnerable things sharing being very um like specific in our funny little words like hey they're smarty pants or you know but not everybody would do that some people we have one client who has a dog as his and it's like get the F up and show up to my Facebook live. <laughs> like that's the way that he talks. You know, there's, you want to be really specific in the, in the small nuances that you're using in the languaging. Mm -hmm. um, so that you're, you can really deter as well as attract because right. I don't want everybody talking to my bot. I, some people, we are happy if you stay away. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's, 
it's something that a lot of marketers have to learn. And, and what you maybe learned early on in that kind of starving artist moment is that if you try and serve everybody, you're going to end up serving nobody. And I, I, I learned this when I was like, I tried to learn everything and then I didn't implement anything. And similarly, if you don't have a, a narrowed focus, if you don't have even a, a narrowed personality, uh, being vanilla today is not very... It's not very good, you know, or at least it doesn't, it's not very engaging at least. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you're just going to fall, you're going to sift through, right? If you're the, the, I mean, and you wear this, like, is there a story behind why you wear the polar bear? No fucking story at all. Zero story. Zero, one, one you day, are committed. <laughs> like, I want everyone to know that I actually saw Hector without the polar bear before we started this Facebook live. Maybe I, you do, I do have hair under. No, <laughs> I, don't, I tell people this one day, my, my wife was like, she was cleaning out the closet and she's like, here's this hat. I'm going to throw it away. Do you want it? And I was like, yes. Are you kidding? I'm gonna His wear nose that. is starting to come apart. Oh, I'm gonna, oh yeah. I know. <laughs> and I had someone message me today and he's like, I'm going to order a tiger and we're going to have a zoo. And it's like, that's, you know, but I, but I think what it is, is just like it's personality because otherwise I'm talking about pretty stuffy stuff, you know, kind of. Yeah. Like, and, and when you, when you're scrolling and you see someone, what the fuck is he wearing a panda hat for? You at least get the, you know, it gets them to stop a little bit. And then, um, you know, I've had people who are like, you know what, because of the panda hat, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not watching this. And I'm like, Peace. Bye, Felicia. Like, I, see ya. <laughs> I've had people say, like, even people who have joined our programs, I had someone message me privately and say that she couldn't handle all the grimaces I make with my face. So she was going to cover my face up with a book so she could listen to my content. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, thank you for telling me, but this is the face I was born you with. Do, lady. Whatever you got to do. But on yeah. the converse side of that, I've had so many people who are like, oh, love the hat, love the hat. Oh, yeah. pan, whatever. Pan, pan, and it just, it, it allows you to stand out, you know, and I kind of stumbled upon it and I ran, you know, one day I didn't have it and everyone was like, where's the hat? <laughs> I don't know that I'll start wearing it more so and, but I mean that actually speaks to another thing that we do very strategically which I'm sure you are now also like you just explained is like my teal glasses or like bright lipstick if I do a video without bright lipstick it's like it's not my normal character mm -hmm. and the big earrings or bright lipstick actually make me happy it's not like it's something that is like a gimmick that I've just put right. on for the, the whole point of craft, you know, the hat is definitely a gimmick. The hat is definitely <laughs> That's okay. But, but I like that you like outed it that way also, because, and it also shows that you're listening to your audience, because if you take it off and everybody's like, no, we want the hat, give them what they want. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so good. So let's, let's talk about like, for you, you seem to have a really good idea about branding and differentiation. So I'm curious about some of these things, because we could talk about the button clicks and the quick replies and all, I think all that stuff after you start to, after you understand that the next level is, and very quickly, I'm going all over the place, but very quickly, people are expecting bots to be more than just a delivery content delivery system. They're expecting them yeah. to be more than just this send a message, get a link, opt buy it, you know, buy something. They're, they're, they're very quickly having higher expectations or they're going to tune them out. So what's your, you talk about it a little bit, but what's kind of your thought process when creating this kind of personality or this 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 bot character avatar thing okay about. so the first thing we do is this thing called the quesadilla of awesome do you know what this is i have no idea what this is okay, I, good. I love quesadillas so, and love awesome so. okay see so we're already on the right track so you take everything that you offer in your business and this is like for the the bot client or the person who's building their own bot like there's things that you are offering right it's similar to what you were saying don't talk about bots Right. So we're going to talk, think, take everything that you offer in your business, the benefits you provide, the results. You hold them like this. Here, do it with me, Hector. Hold them like this. Okay. And then you're going to throw them away. <laughs> and now what are you left with? Oh, God. Whatever. I don't know. We don't have anything. You're left with you as oh. like a human being. <laughs> It's nothing. It's a, <laughs> it's a soulless vase. <laughs> a soulless panda hat. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, for me, the bots are really similar to what I do with my clients with Facebook Live because we have to start with, it's like going back to Stanislavski, who is a Russian coach on acting and taking, and, and if you, okay, 
So I want a commitment from everybody who's watching right now that you will be open to diving into the quesadilla of awesome. So give me a yes if you're going to be open to this. Drop a food emoji if you guys are into <laughs> the quesadilla of awesome. I love some tacos. There's a taco emoji, right? We definitely have some taco emojis. So there's 30 of you guys on here. If we don't have a few people on who comment with some some taco emojis, we're cutting this off early. So okay. ending. Yeah. I need a taco. Okay, so at that point that we have to, with this Russian philosopher that has this whole theory on acting, the most important thing on it, Stanislavski is his name, and he says, we have to work on oneself. If we're not starting from a human place and we're expecting to use this technology to connect with other humans, it's gonna get messy. Thank you for the hamburger, Louis, I love it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so we take who we are as a human being, and I have all of our clients, everyone, make a list of 20 things that make you a uniquely awesome human. Mm. And it's hard. Yeah. Especially when we get into that place where we're like building our business and we're focused on results. Mm -hmm. I have to go back and be like, wait a minute, I'm a human being. <laughs> so because it's hard, I made an acronym for it. It's the word SAVE. It has five letters. So you may notice save usually only has four, but I can't spell. And I'm just letting you know, my bot can't spell sometimes too, because that's who I am. So <laughs> I put my spelling mistakes right up front. It's um, S-A-A-V-E. And you fill in these categories. I'm going to go super quick through them, which cover your skill set. So like the things that you're naturally good at, just like born naturally good at your appearance, because if you can't find something about your appearance that you like, when you are out there celebrating you, and the bot is connecting people to you, then there's gonna be like a confidence issue. Mm. So, and if there's an issue with your hair, you just throw a panda hat on. That's exactly right? what it is. So you, <laughs> you celebrate your appearance, you celebrate the activities that you love. So knitting, crocheting, hiking, singing, because you're gonna incorporate these fun things into your bot as well. And this works best for a personal brand, but with, with a, a brand that's not necessarily represented by a human being, you can do this also, like Coca-Cola mm -hmm. could do this, right? Um, and then the fourth one is your values. So the more clearly that you can celebrate your values, the better. Because as we all know, things are gonna happen. We're gonna be challenged in business. And the more hardcore we are with our values, we'll be attracting the people who celebrate the same values that we celebrate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and then the final thing that we do is E for things that you like to eat. And the reason that we talk about that is because I swear I have tested this 1500 times. If you post a picture of Brussels sprouts, people will either love it or hate it. And it's like super engagement. <laughs> Only Brussels sprouts, right? Or I imagine broccoli might get a rage too. Uh... Could be. But broccoli is a little more safe than Brussels sprouts. And now I will tell you on April Fool's, go look at my timeline. At least four people posted things about Brussels sprouts on my timeline. And I've had two separate friends send me a Brussels sprout themed um, uh, dish towel that says every day on Brusselin because I've like made it a point to talk about things that are not necessarily specifically tied to my business results, which makes it more human. I dig it. So yeah. man, John, Catherine, Katia, Aubrey, I love, like, I'm curious what stood out for you because skills, activities, appearance, values, and things that you eat I'm curious for you guys, like, what do you feel you could implement more into your personal brand? Um, I'm Because I, I've got, like, I haven't even thought about things that I eat, like avocados. Like, I love avocados, and I feel like people should know that, right? Right. Uh, so if you do, a, if you send out something on a bot that's like, do you like avocados? That's all it needs to be. Then you get people who are going to go to the next step. You start a conversation. You can, I can't believe I haven't actually done that about Brussels sprouts. <laughs> but like I can segment people based on their Brussels sprout likes, like whatever. It's just getting people to know they can have a conversation that's, mm -hmm. that's more human based. Um, so there was a question. Curious, when you have these answers, so what, how do you craft these into, how do you put them, like, what's your thought process of now implementing and integrating these into the bot so that it seems like, like it's some sort of collective persona? I mean, yeah. So from there, we, we start off with that quesadilla of awesome. And then you actually, th the next thing also is like on a daily basis as a human, this is the personal brand thing, which there was a question about um, non-personal brands. And I'd love to talk about that later too, because this works really well for that also. But you start recognizing like, what are the things that fill you with life and bring you joy just in your life in general, right? So you, I, I like to keep a, a daily journal, like a joy journal, mm. just to write the things down that come to you that bring you joy. Those things become something that you infuse with your brand. 
And the more that you infuse those things with your brand so they can go, like your gifts can be centered towards your quesadilla of awesome. Your, um, the way that your languaging is. So then we have like a whole branding strategy that we go through where you answer a bunch of questions, but it's like the foundation of it is what are the things that you really love? So it's not like sparkles and, you know, stars and all of this are not things right. that I've added in later. It's things that came from things that I loved already. And then just elevating that. Right. And then from there, you look at your clients and see what they, it's, it's like the next step would be to look to your ideal client. So I'm curious guys, cause there's a lot that Molly's actually, we're going to take this a little bit in different place because you, I, I feel like you coach a lot of people in terms of uh, like helping them with their confidence. I'd imagine that like, yeah. you know, the, the prepared performer, right. If that's the name of the, the, the course, is that what it's called? My, my, it's my business name. Yeah. My, my course is called camera confidence. Oh, which... so, so yeah, I, I knew that I got it from somewhere, yeah. but essentially it's, it's, it's about, you know, people creatives. And I think that for me, my, my chatbots in a weird nerdy way are like art for me, you know, and that's totally. kind of the way that I, I treat it. And, and similarly, there's a lot of like putting yourself out there that's involved in marketing and building a business. And what you're talking about is going down to that, to like who you are, right. And like really finding that self-awareness and then building and extrapolating from there. I think a lot of people, especially on social media and Facebook lives, there's this vanity thing that a lot of people struggle with when both you and me realize like we just are us hanging out in front of a camera. Like, although there may be some performing ultimately we're, we're, we're showing, right? I mean, yeah. You, you and would, that's where like, the, I, that, cause so many people are like, how do you prepare to perform? I'm like, you just learn who you are mm -hmm. and you live that way in a more like loud sense or mm -hmm. elevated sense. And even if you're like qu someone who's quieter and more introspective and not as like crazy as maybe we might necessarily be, there are people who need to hear from you as well. You know, so it's really tapping into who are, like, who is the essence of you and bringing that, like, how can you create a character in your bot around that? Or how can you bring that person to the Facebook lives? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, guys, I want you guys to throw any questions that you guys uh, have down there because um, we're going to, we're going to, I mean, we, Molly and I could probably sit here and talk bots all day. Um, but I'm curious, like, looking forward and with all of the, I always kind of try and bring up with the whole scandal, shebangle, whatever you want to call it that happened with this last, you know, week in Facebook and stuff. How, what was your initial reaction and, and how did you kind of like, how did you handle that with your students? Like what, what's your kind yeah. of thought process moving forward with the whole embargo? So I, it was like such a specific moment where we realized what it had when we heard the news, but before we heard that news, it's like, we have the Facebook apocalypse. Like you've been, you know, there's, I am super big about saying, and I'm, I know you are in the same place with this, is that we don't own Facebook. We don't own any of this. So we need to be making sure that we're bringing people into our email list, into our real life conversations outside of these ma magical tools that we're using. And like I said earlier, while we have these tools ready for us, we need to jump in as hard and fast as we can mm -hmm. <laughs> so that we can get the most out of them um, strategically as possible, right? Well, going back to the beginning, what's interesting, I didn't, you know, I was kind of fortunate enough for it, but you talked, we talked at the beginning of this video about brand and kind of uh, creating, you know, a persona so that people relate. Um, I think I kind of shared with you loosely or you saw whatever, uh, many crash uh, overnight deleted my bot and just like shut down on me and, yeah. and all my clients. And so there was like a moment where I was like, fuck. Oh. But then I, for some reason, like, wasn't like life wasn't over because I had a Facebook group where people were like, what's going on? What's next? I had a, you know, my student group where they were like, what are we going to do? Like, <laughs> like they, like they kind of felt the same kind of thing. And because I had built a brand, because I had wore a stupid panda hat for a long time, you know, in a day or so, I got a quarter of those subscribers back. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're not where we were, but, but the point is, is that if you build a brand and you have that connection and that, and that real relatability, um, when those things or these things happen, it doesn't spell the end of the world for you. Totally. And like, you know, we've talked about that. So just like all out there, whatever, like we're using 
many, I don't know, are we allowed to say the word here? <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Okay. So <laughs> I use many chat. It's like, when this thing happened, I was like, what is going on? Like, I didn't, you know, I wasn't aware of all the stuff that was happening. And then there was like all kinds, and I'm going to be super honest, right? So there was all kinds of shade thrown at the admins in the many chat group. I'm an admin in the many chat group. So I was like, I don't even know what's happening. Like, so um, I, you know, and I've talked to them about it. We don't need to get into all that here, but like, it's, it, it, I honestly, like out of everything that happened, I, um, I will say that the way that you handled it was so like with respond the way that you responded to everyone in that was like so amazing to me because you could have taken it as a way to be like, ah, you know, and like freak out and go another in some other direction. And I'm sure in the moment there was like a lot of that going on. <laughs> um, but I, you know, we always need to know that there's going to be some sort of disasters that happen at some point. And, and like, we don't own those tools. Like anything can happen. I do. I think maybe those things could have happened a different way, perhaps, but, but our, but like, we don't own these tools, right? Does it terrify me that it could happen at any point to anyone? Um, yes. And do we need to follow all of the rules? Yes. Like, this is why we need to be careful not to send promotional broadcasts or do crazy things that we're not allowed to do with Facebook that a lot of people are doing all the time, you know? Yes. Um, yes. We're going to have some thoughts after off of a, uh, off air. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and I'm talking about like sending a message out to your, like sending a message out to your list. You know so what I'm so talking I think about? That's a great place to take the conversation um, because otherwise I'm going to get in trouble here. Yeah. Um, so wait, so let me go back. I'll just answer the question, like the original question. So when the whole apocalypse thing happened, like, um, or no, sorry, the messenger apocalypse, there's when all of this, when they stopped bots, Kelly and I were together, my team member, and she looked over and was like, oh my gosh, bots aren't allowed to be built for you know, whatever, like, look at what just happened. I, so many people thought that they had turned these tools off, which is not true. Um, but what, <laughs> what I did is I created five new Facebook pages. I immediately published the bot. When I saw that, I immediately published. <laughs> I was like, five new Facebook pages, five new test bots that I created right away, like connected all of my accounts. We had one new client that we had just brought on who luckily we hadn't had our first call, but I had her add me as an admin um, nice. to her Facebook page. She has three Facebook pages. We were only going to be building for one at first and then eventually doing all three. So I added all three really quickly. Um, and then, you know, we, we mess messaged everyone and said, if you've been waiting, like there's people who are in our course who had not turned their account on yet. I'm like, what are you waiting for? Right. So, you know, luckily I was at a conference where I couldn't like allow myself to get caught up in it. Um, but it's like a good, a good point that like, you've got to jump in and do these things right away. And you want to be careful, um, going forward that, you know, you don't actually own these platforms. I, I think for, for moving forward, it's a good, it's a good thing for, uh, for there to put some speed limits and some straight signs and some, you know, to, to, yeah. to, to create some sort of. I don't know. Regulations really. And, yeah. and the interesting thing is like, you know, we, doesn't matter. We don't need to go back to the many crash situation. I, I, it, it, but the point is moving forward for people to, to be paying attention to these regulations. And it's like, I above one am like all for it. Like, especially the 24 hour rules and all these kinds of things. I think it's important for people to be utilizing it the right way. Otherwise bots are going to get a bad, you know, a bad name. People are going to go off of the messenger platform and then it's, it's really yeah. Crazy. So, if you look at the rules that they have for it, all of them are actually to the benefit of all of us. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. For sure. But um, they're also, some of the rules are really wishy-washy. Like, what for is, sure. <laughs> right? like, is it promotional to send out a broadcast saying that you're doing a Facebook Live, even if you're not selling anything on the Facebook Live? Like, someone could say that's promotional. Someone could just say, I'm just providing content and value. Well, here's the thing, right? It says general updates, right? So if we want to get into the terms of the service... Broad, br promote broadcast messages could be anything of a updating like it's, it's like content nature so with that being said if if it's saying hey click on my facebook live i think that is a fully non-promotional because in in the in the terms of service it says things like new updates new like like if, right uh, news yeah news right is what they use so a facebook live is that now if it says hey buy that's that's promotional right but i I think that there's also that. I think that the use of um, 
making sure that there's always like an unsubscribe button. Like every, every, every broadcast I sent out that was just to like my list always had an unsubscribe. If you actually, like, hey, I just put a new Facebook live out. It was like, so unsubscribe me angry face and it was like peace. you uh, okay can we talk about unsubscribes actually because people yeah. i've had people message me like oh my gosh i had you know i've had 30 unsubscribes in the past month i'm like stop freaking oh, yeah so Good. i screenshot it i know i'm like can i send you my whatever it was like i don't know the time frame but it was like way more than 30 and i said i don't want people in there that are not going to be mm-hmm. you know wanting to be there so i'm ha- like go i don't want to you know, deal with you if you're not really wanting to be here. It's so. it's interesting because I what's um you know you can go in and if you look on your uh, if you look in Facebook pages you can actually see the reviews that your bot has gotten and um, I've had thousands of subscribers and I've had two reviews right one was a five star one was a two star but out of all that was like there was two reviews and I think that I've had you know I've had tons of bots and other than the ones that my the interesting is the bot was the page is still set up. Many chat just decided to delete my user. It doesn't matter. Um, but but uh, but like, what's interesting is that when people are utilizing these these rules, like nothing bad happens. The 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 users are excited. The yeah. ones who don't want your message, they stop getting it. The ones who want it, they're even more engaged. So totally, and it's like an ego thing. I mean, like yesterday, I perp- I sent out a message to you know like five thousand people. And I usually I send things out that are more segmented than that. But yesterday I was like, I've got a lot of stuff happening. I'm just going to send this out to everybody. And I knew we were going to get unsubscribes and I was okay. Like, I'm like, every once in a while, it's good to like clear it. You look in your dashboard. I always had like, every time I sent a general broadcast, there was always, I don't know what the percentage was, maybe five, 10% unsubscribe, which, which is for some people who are typical with, or used to email marketing would freak out and go, Oh my goodness, all these people are unsubscribing. And it's like, well, if you sent out an email, they, they would have unsubscribed if it was that easy anyways. And if there was like a watchdog that, you know, you like, there is a watchdog now. We're playing on Facebook's platform. And the, the uh, and I haven't actually done the math for this. So maybe you'd be good at the math for this because I haven't taken the time to do it. But I feel like if we look at the percentage of how many people are opening compared to how many people are unsubscribing. Right. Right. That's where the real difference is. And people are like, well, no one unsubscribe. I don't want people to unsubscribe from my email. I'm like, cause they're not even opening. Your email. Yeah. So I'm like, ah. So I don't know. We just got to people. Yeah. And well, it's a different playground. It's, it's a different, it's like, it's not email. It's like, it's not those old fuddy duddy. E- it's not email marketing. And the days that I was talking to, who was I talking to? They were, they were sharing that they subscribed to Grant Cardone's bot and his, his is very Grant Cardone ish where he's sending 10 broadcasts a day. And, uh, you know, like, like for email, I don't know if anyone's going to talk to uncle grant. Cause like, who's there going to shut down uncle grant, but like Facebook could easily like, like those are, those are things that you can't do anymore. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. I know John Allness was a big email marketer. He would send three emails a day or th- one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. And it's like, that's cool. And that, when that, when that like didn't ping your phone all the time, yeah. but like, if my mom texted me three days, three times a day, I'd be like, whoa, you need to chill. Like, do you have an unsubscribe button, mom? <laughs> so different playground for sure. Yeah, 100%. Let me, so let's see, moving forward, where do you see the future of, of bots and, and kind of how you, you know, and what, what are you excited about in terms of the messenger marketing world and how bots are evolving and how, um, you know, the different capabilities and the features that, that are being un- unlocked with bots. Like where, where does your brain go um, when you think about the future? I, so there's two things. One is just the fact that more people, more of the users are understanding what it is so that they are looking forward to engaging and, and seeing what options they can pull out of things or wishing that Disneyland had a bot so that you could get updates on things, you know? Um, so it's like just the users being more aware and their ability to, to really grasp it. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Um, it's and also, point. it's a good point because a lot of a lot of times you like we build really complex bots and then users don't even get it and they're like, yes. they're like just hit the button, you know. Button. So that uh, is going to be big. Um, what else? Which you- that's important too when we're building things. Also, I think like we can get super nerded out on like the and I I mean watching your videos, I'm always like, yeah, that's so cool. But like for for a lot of normal people, they don't they like something super simple could still bring in amazing results. Right. And, um, 
and allow them to have an awesome experience too. And that's all a lot of times people need to build to, in order to impress business owners, you know, and, and yeah. potential clients. Like they think they need these elaborate bots. And like, I hook up a couple of links and buttons and I send them a demo, you know, flow or demo link. And then they're like, oh, send me a contract. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah. So like putting ourselves in the mindset of our, who the ideal client that you're speaking to is so important in that. Um, but really, I mean, I was talking to, I spoke at the 90 day year about bots last week and it was cool because I was speaking about strategy and like case studies and showing, you know, we've had some seriously ridiculous results for clients. And so I was showing like, you know, messages they sent us and stuff. And then there was a woman named Shanette who was there with me and she builds bot platforms from the ground up. So she's not using a separate tool and talking to her about it. And, you know, she's using, Alexa, she has an Alexa bot, like different types of things where you can use, um, like she was talking about taking your whole course and putting it into Alexa and it being able to say like, Molly, get, you know, bring up camera confidence episode or, you know, module three. <laughs> and um, just that there's so many, like the AI stuff that you've been playing with recently, which I think I shared, I've been watching Joel Com do it, but I'm always like, what do I need to do that? I don't know, I'm gonna go back to focusing on what I'm doing, but I, it's something that I'm like super stoked mm -hmm. to get into all of that stuff and just making things more fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when I tell, when I tell people that like, oh, bots are a fad, bots are going away. It's like, you don't get it, little one. Like you are, you know, like young Padawan, sit down. Like, let me, <laughs> let me learn you real quick. Um, <clears throat> John, John, I was talking to, to Sal yesterday and he was like, yeah, I built my first bot on kick. And I'm like, I don't I, like, you know, so these things they've, they've been around. I mean, did you, did you ever play with the aim bots back in the day? Did you ever have an aim account? Yeah, um, I had a name account. Yeah, do you remember they had aim, like 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 uh, they had like aim bots? You know, it was like a homework helper or the. Oh homework. yeah, 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 totally. So it's like these things are not going away. Like now, it's just you have Alexa where you can do that stuff, or um, you know, uh, it's just it's going to integrate with VR and augmented reality. So it's going to lots of cool places. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. Catherine says a good place to get a bot character like Molly bot drawn. Is there, is there like a character like Molly bot is a character? Like yeah. That? So we have totally, um, which, so we, mine was actually drawn by a friend of mine along like years ago. She had to do a little avatar. And then we had a graphic designer that I work with took, cause I wear this robot. I can't believe I didn't bring it today. Oh my gosh. I know exactly where it is. I can't believe I didn't wear my robot helmet. I have little other ro little other things here, but I have, my robot helmet is sitting with my kids' toys right now. But I have a giant robot helmet that I used to wear in my videos all the time. <laughs> um, and so my Molly bot is like my little avatar who looks just like me, but she has a robot helmet. <laughs> that is. So and so she's always on my shoulder. Like I have all my images have her on my shoulder um, with me. So Catherine, uh, I need to, I don't have someone specific, but that's somebody that I need to have like on hand. Yeah I, yeah, I think uh, just get in, in Molly's universe and I'm She's sure- She's in my course. So Catherine, I'm going to do that. Okay, great. <laughs> we so many like Camp Fan members here. I love it. So give oh, us a- good. They made it. <clears throat> I'm glad they made it. Yeah. Um, Mar <laughs> Yari asks, how do you create a bot personality? What's your step-by-step -step process? We went over that. Um, can you hit them with the quick one, two, three? It's the, the quesadilla of awesome. And then- I Yeah, so awesome. you have- you really get clear about who you are as a uniquely amazing human. You make a list of 20 things that make you an awesome human and start keeping a daily record of the things that bring you joy. And then you figure out how you like start to slowly implement or quickly, whatever pace you're at, implement those things that make you uniquely awesome and bring them into your brand. So in, and in the messaging, you would say like, you know, I was swing dancing this weekend and I thought about how we spin in circles in our business. <laughs> Whatever. So, um, and then maybe you'd use like a, your GIF would um, be more, you know, I found this really awesome collection of GIFs from someone. Did you hear, wait a minute, you might, you might, this might impact you. Did you hear they are taking out the prostitutes from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride? <laughs> they are, that people got, <laughs> what? do you know the ones, the, the spinning they're ones? Like chase that, around, <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah, the, no, the, people got offended. So they're, I think they're out. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Cause I like live at Disneyland. I know the pirates of the Caribbean so well. <laughs> I'm actually surprised. Cause you know, then there's a like heavy set woman that chases the guy around. It's like all the guys chasing the women around and then it like goes the other way. I'm surprised somebody hadn't complained about that sooner. Well, apparently they, they were complaining cause the guys used to chase the women and they're like, mm -mm, that's not no, no, no. It's 20, you know, 12 <laughs> back then. So then they switched it around and then that wasn't even good enough. Cause they're out. 
They are out. Apparently, they just. Oh my gosh! Pirate I just want them to get rid of the dirty foot that hangs off of the. If you've been to the Pirates of the Caribbean, you know what dirty foot I'm talking about. It's like hanging off the edge. It looks like dirt's gonna fall on your is face. It like off the bridge? Are you talking? Yeah, about it's on the bridge when you're going underneath it. You like yeah, see the dirty foot. Right you're like what? Okay, okay, but that's like an example. We could have someone. Let's say somebody has like a strong connection to the Pirates of the Caribbean. They could have a pirate bot who let's say you're like a money coach and the whole bot could be themed as this pirate bot who is like sneaking in things about your life <laughs> into this bot to like connect with other humans. Um, do you know Lindsay Padilla and Emily? I feel like I've seen the name. Okay. So they had a course that they no longer have anymore called, um, f- uh, I don't, they were called the funnel besties and they had the funnel playground is what it was called. And their bot was Marty McFunnel. Mm-hmm. And it was all back to the future themed. And it was so fun because every single thing in it was back to the future themed, like everything in it. That's so fun. That yeah. is so fun. Yeah. Bots are, bots are fun. And I, and I shared this, we kind of talked about at the beginning, but it's like the, the developers and the marketers are getting together where our powers are kind of uniting and it, it's just creating this really, really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> we need to do more live videos. Um, Can you just do a video like this with just the panda's head I'm talking? Barely, I didn't know. I found out that like when I looked down at my phone, like you can just see the panda and sometimes I'm bobbing like this. So <laughs> this gets people to stop uh, on there. So <laughs> Molly, let's, let's wrap this thing up. Is there anything else you wanted to share or talk about? Um, we're going to get to you. I know you have a, a course, you have a community, you obviously got an agency. So I want to give you a chance to talk about that um, in a second. <laughs> But is there anything just just topic wise that you wanted to get into? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love to talk about like results and strategies, but you're so great about sharing that kind of stuff, too. So I think it's been fun to talk about this, the way that incorporate to incorporate your brand energy and really um, give your bot um like a personality so that people feel they, they not only develop a connection to you on your Facebook lives, they develop a connection to the character that you've created inside your bot. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, they're going to feel bad on subscribing because they're going to be like, Oh no, Molly bot's going to be sad. <laughs> right. Or they're well, going to want to come back. I think what's what I love and I'll, maybe I'll share this kind of with you is that I love that bots can be, I'm, I, I don't think that we didn't get into it today. I don't know how much you know my story. I started my, my very first business in direct sales when I was 17. And that's where I got my kind of, before I even did a Facebook live or whatever, I built a, a, a huge sales organization. But what I, business was it? It was Cutco. I don't know if you're familiar oh, with yeah, Cutco. Okay, yes. Yeah. I have a good friend who started there also and now has this like crazy sales coaching business. But we love bots for direct What's sales. What's their name? Do you so, know their name? Yeah, her name is Tasha. Uh, I, she was I like one of their top sellers and now- Tasha. Yeah, I, I know Tasha. I know. Um, we always make jokes about selling knives, but- I I'm again, Yeah, no, see that that trophy right there. I was I built a huge organization, whatever. We, we did lots of cool things. But point is, is that I I- hate selling. I mean, like I suck at selling. I take it back to my, my third grade crush rejected me in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in like the closet, like the, where you put your backpacks. Like I told her, I professed my love to her and she ran away in terror. And ever since then I had just had this huge self doubt thing about sales and confidence and whatever, whatever, whatever that sales. The reason I say this is I love now that my bot gets to do the selling for me. I can just, that I don't have to be the hard sales closer that I can utilize the bot and all the cool things that it can do to do those sales through that, do that sales for me so that people just love me and I just get to be me, but I can still, like you said, sneak in those, those kind of salesy things that are, that are dressed up. You know, a lot of people say that I, I give out so much content and so much value. And, and the reality is, is that frankly, it's, it's so that I, it, it's, it's, it's a funnel. It's, it's a funnel. It's like value. It's free content. You know, it's like, th- this is going places like, yeah. like, so, so I think that there are ways now to, to create a system, a business, a bot that people are endeared to and don't mind giving money to as well. Like they don't- And are excited to give money to because they're so grateful for the value that they provide, right? Mm -hmm. Like I remember Pat Flynn when he first- like he was like the first person that I really had heard about online marketing from Mm -hmm. and um, developed my whole website. Everything was created based on listening to smart passive income. Mm -hmm. Never, you know, he had all this affiliate stuff, obviously, but he never charged for anything. And I remember the first time he opened up a course, I was like, I cannot give him money fast enough. Whether or not I wanted the program, same thing happened with Mari Smith. Mari Smith had done all of, she was like such an amazing mentor to me and reaching out. And when there was finally an opportunity that I could pay her, I was like, take my money. (laughs) Like, 
Yeah. Um, and that's what a chatbot can do is it in, I, I'll share with you like one, one thing that it's really helped me is what I call like the accelerator method. And my students know, don't know this, but this is, it's like with, with a, with a typical email funnel, it was like, it was this funnel that like kind of caved in on this offer. And it was like email, email, email. And then they stopped providing value and it was just like offer, 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 offer. And then, yeah. and then you had to switch from giving value to now start selling. Well, and that was just because of the nature of emails, you know, yeah. it's very, it, it's just not a very dynamic uh, medium to express a sales message, right? You just have to yeah. text up and down. Whereas a chatbot, you can deliver value and then you can make it really easy. I always tell my students to just include a button right at the bottom. Hey, here's this awesome video. And then right underneath it to have a button that accelerates the sales process that if they want more, they can, they can get more, but if they don't, then you don't force it down their throat. And then you just drip. I love, I, we've, I've never heard you talk about this and I love it. We actually, so we have like, you know, the little, that little quick response or whatever thing mm -hmm. that you can do at the bottom. We have funnels that are in place where we, and it's funny speaking to clients about it who don't necessarily, necessarily understand the way the bots work. They wanted us, this one specific client wanted us to take her emails and just transfer it into the bot. And I was like, it's not going to work that way. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's not going to work. So that's exactly what we've done is we're giving value. And then it just says like more support or like, you know, little, the, the tricky thing is you have such a short amount of text. Um, so, well, this is another good thing then let's, we could talk about for those people who are watching is like, I, I think about like bot copy and the difference, like emails is like, you would write a letter to somebody, right? You sit down and you write a letter and you get your coffee and your tea and maybe your other substances, whatever you need, you write your letter. Then but for text, you pull out your phone, you shoot a text real quick. And a text yeah. message is a back and forth. Like if you were to tell a friend, like you wouldn't write this text of, hey, did you hear what happened last night? And then this happened, and this person got drunk and then this person fell out the window and then this person showed up. And like, if you read that text, you'd be like, oh my God, like I'm gonna do that <laughs> later. But if you, as a friend, you're like, yo, did you hear what happened last night? Then you're, then they respond back, no, what happened? And then it's this, it's this back and forth, this kind of volleying, as opposed to email is like you throw a message at them, they consume it, and if they want to keep it back to you, then they can, right? Where, does that make sense? Well, yeah, and I'm so glad that you said that too, because this actually speaks to something that I was messaging you about earlier, is that people think that just because they have this ability to create a tool like this, that they can just turn the things, and sometimes it's hard for people to even turn the things on, but they can turn the things on and that they'll work. But there are so many nuances to the way that you craft these messages. And that's just one example. Like people will say, do you, <laughs> this is something that gets me, like they'll say, um, do you want to learn more? Question mark. And then it'll say, the name of the course as the button link. When in our brain, we're reading, do you want to learn more? My brain is thinking, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I want more. <laughs> like, yes or no. So give like a yes or no option. Right. Or, or people will write things in the bot saying like, would you like access to, or it'll say like my something from the, the bot's point of view. But really mm -hmm. those buttons should be written from the person who's reading its point of view. Yeah which there's so many little weird nuances that go into this tool in order to make them effective that if you are, and I don't know if we have a lot of people here right now who are necessarily um, selling bots, which I know a lot of people in your community are. So I would just say, if you are selling bots and building bots for people, like stand in the ownership of the fact that you have something amazing to offer in the way that you're communicating with your clients, in the way that you're helping your client to actually create this magical journey for their clients. Um, it's more than and like, don't ever let anybody tell you that it's just like some little thing that you're clicking buttons to make something work. There is you're especially if you're here working with Hector, like there is an art and a science to this and um, like own your own value in this because you are ahead of the curve and you are, you know, you have something amazing to offer in this situation. So yeah. um, I, I started my, my trainings off with uh, when my, some of my sales trainings with like showing them how much the average app development costs, which is like, I think that average, like on average, it's like 115 grand to get an app developed in the U S it's like, all of a sudden you put, you, you, you put a chatbot in an app and they're all of a sudden very comparable in what they can do for a business. And you, and then now all of a sudden you're not scared to ask for a two, three, you know, we were talking earlier about some of these yeah. people who get, you know, uppity about some of these prices. So I, uh, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah.
And if you start with that quesadilla of awesome, then you're going to start from a place where you'll be able to differentiate yourself, you know, in this, in the exact niche or, or skill set that you're bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys, throw down any questions. I would encourage you. I tagged Molly. Um, I tagged her profile in the, in the, in the, in the description here. However, um, where, if they want to learn more about your quesadilla of awesomeness, um, Can I, where, where should they go? I, where- I mean, I'd love to have you join my Facebook group. You know, we're, we're putting out so much value inside that Facebook group. And actually I didn't even really mention this today, but I work for be live TV and I love that company so much. And, um, I do a Facebook live for be live every Wednesday yeah. and, um, oh, cool. yeah. It's an awesome partnership that I have with them there. So um, I can give you a link if you want a link. People can message me with the words, whatever. <laughs> Where do you, uh, what's the name of the Facebook group? Um, it's called Elevate Your, if you look up Elevate Your Awesome, you'll find it. It's Facebook Live and Messenger Bots for Entrepreneurs. But it's elevateyourawesome.live is our group. Actually, if you go to, look, this is my proper, this is what I would teach people to do. If you go to that preparedperformer.com slash group, you'll see a nice little landing page is with me holding the some. The Prepared Performer? Yep, the prepared performer.com slash group. Actually, if you want access to my group, this is what I would really teach people to do. Comment below with the word group and I'll come back and connect with you and get you the link. And if she was a good marketer, she would pick her call to action before she got on the recording. I'm just kidding. I'm Guys, like come, anti come, call to action today. I don't know. I'm like I threw, I threw the link in the description. Comment group if you want info and, and go connect with Molly. Like uh, I, I know, uh, frankly, I don't know how we ended up as Facebook friends, but you popped yeah. up and um, I, I star some people and I put, you know, see their people, their things first. I have you on see first too. Yeah, that's so weird. That's yeah. Crazy. I mean, I will say usually when I do my videos, I drop my call to action before I even introduce myself. But today I decided I'm just showing up to have a conversation and to share some nuggets. Mm-hmm. So. She's uh, She does a ton of just, uh, great lives and just um, she's great at just sp- I love her because she takes away my excuses for content because she's out just creating Facebook lives wherever she is and it uh, uh, makes me um, it just keeps me honest so I thank you for that Molly and your your wonderful personality and stuff um, guys if you guys have any questions for Molly drop them we'll down back. below and uh, she's great about the whole social media thing and I'm so sure sure she'll come back and answer them and uh, we will see you guys this is our last interview for today tomorrow we are going to be sharing um, a cool little software uh, that we are doing, launching to help revolutionize the education program. And we're building a bot for that. So we'll talk about that. Yeah. Bye, Anna. But I'll see.